Happy New Year! Well, happy belated New Year. <laughs> it's a little close to the middle now. I finally got my Japan crate for this month. I would have done my Tokyo treat, but when it arrived a, a little while back, or earlier in the month, it got a little water, some water in it, so it ruined my book. They they changed the whole book, so now it's actually literally a booklet instead of more of a pamphlet. And so they're sending me a new one in my next box, my February box. So when I get that one, then I can do that box. I, I just don't want to show you this wrinkled piece of mess of a booklet. But I can do the Japan Great, the new January 22 edition. And it's like, Happy New Year! <laughs> and here are the various contents of the box. I'll move it away back. If you can see them, move it that way. It might be a little better for you. And there's the other side. Okay. Unfortunately, they did not give... Well, they gave a drink, but uh, it's an odd one. It's not coffee. It's something else. It might be a little... I'm a little white because of my ring light up there. But I'm drinking my lemonade just to take the place. And there is the box. It's got some cool artwork on it there. A little uh, strange thing on the back there. And happy new year. But we'll we'll go with the drink first. They did say that if I can get the lid to stop falling on me here. They did say that this was supposed to be like meant to be drunk hot. I'll give you the description. This is the Shuriko drink. Shuriko is a dessert made from azuka beans from Hokkaido that's best served hot. Use this soothing warm drink to brighten up a cold winter's day. All right. Uh, I'm going to drink it cold to see what it tastes like. Hmm. Definitely has the smell of beans. Gas? <laughs> Yeah. Even if it was hot, it still wouldn't be that great, in my opinion. It's like liquefied uh, lima beans in a way, but azuka beans in this case, so it doesn't taste exactly like lima. But it has this sugar in it, and it just, it's a little off-putting. So I, that's that's a miss on that one. I wouldn't I wouldn't put stuff like that in a box. I mean, I, I like new stuff, and... Anything that's new in a box is great, but this is a very, uh, you, you gotta have to grown up around it to really enjoy it, I guess. Imuraya, Imuraya, I don't know if you can see it there, it's hard to tell, Imura. I M U R A Y A. That's who made it. It says hot. <laughs> it might be better hot, but I don't think so because of the sugar content that is inside of it. So I don't know. Uh, we'll pass. But we'll go with something that's even better. We've had different mochis throughout the years. I don't know sure if we've had a strawberry. Um. Let's see here. Mochito Ichigo. This one combines two of Japan's favorite desserts, mochi and strawberry. The end result is a soft, bouncy, and chewy mochi that's bursting with strawberry cream. Might. I turned off usually with my uh, UCAM 9. That's what I use for the software. Uh, I use the auto lighting that's on it, and it brightens up the background a little bit. I don't know. I might I might turn on. We have an overcast sky today because of the rain. So, and I never can figure out why. This window is always bloomed out. As you can see, it's just one big white 
void. You can't even see the blinds that are in it. It looks like there's nothing there. But I can't. There's no way this, my uh, Logitech camera, it won't bring down the brightness back there. It's really strange. But uh, there's the little mochi. Squishy, squishy. There's the strawberry inside. Mochis are good when they have an interior. If they're just the gel on the outside, even with a little bit of sugar, they're bland. This one's good with the strawberry interior. It really livens it up. The sugar content is minimal. It's almost like just taking a dab of powdered sugar on the outside and just rubbing it around because that's basically what you get. And then there's just a little bit of the, uh, like, I mean, just sugar again, just a little bit of the sugar mixed in with the strawberry jam jelly that's inside. So you get a nice mix of the soft mochi and that nice mild tang of the strawberry. <clears throat> Two different styles of these. Different type of packaging, so they're obviously different entirely. And this one belongs to the Petite Strawberry Milk. We've got another treat made from Emma. Emma U? Amo? Amu? Amo? Amo? <laughs> Amo? A M A O U A M A O. It's a hard word. Strawberries. Obviously, it's a district over in Japan. Uh, these adorable pink candies are strawberry flavored on the outside with a milk flavored center. All right. Let's see. Oh, they're all hard candies. I see. Huh. They look like lo uh, Vicks lozenges. Even the same size, almost. And they have an S on the outside. I don't know if you can barely see it. it smells like strawberry. Definitely. Um, well, I'll go ahead and see if... Being so hard candy, I didn't really want to suck on it because I've got this other stuff to try. Let's see if I can break it up. It's got a very light, nice light strawberry flavor. Hmm. Yeah. The interior mild mildly sweet. And it does kind of resemble a flavor of milk, I guess. So mixing them mixing them together, it's like hard candy milk, strawberry milk in it. Sort of. They're nice. They're good. I like them. And here we have another milk. <laughs> Literally written on the packaging. And it is the milk flavored chocolate. <clears throat> this packaging is inspired by old school Japanese milk cartons. Hmm. Okay. Inside the tiny milk flavored grains of chocolate made for a perfect mini treat in the middle. Okay. Yeah, they are tiny, all right. Little babies. Right there. Mm, oops. One got away from me. One, one's trying to escape. One's trying to, trying to smell it. It doesn't have, doesn't have a scent at all. Hmm. Yeah. It's like a a vanilla flavor to it. I guess you could kind of say milk in a way, but it's more it would be candy milk. Uh it's definitely vanilla with the hard candy shell. Um, I wouldn't equate it to like a milkshake. 
Uh, I'm just going to go straight. Just say vanilla. That's basically what it is. <clears throat> Ooh. I'll wait on that one for the moment. Because I got sweetness in my mouth. I don't want to go to chocolate just yet. And something new here. Odd artwork on it. And we have something I'm not seeing at the moment. I know it's here. What is it? Oh, okay. Again, this is one of these situations where <clears throat> there's obviously different packaging people are getting. The one in here is different than what's shown on here. It's a blue one with two bears on it, where this looks like a hippo, <laughs> I guess. It's a petite, oh, no, I'm sorry, petite, plenty of soda gummies. <laughs> I thought it was going to be petite soda. Experiencing, experience the refreshing flavor of soda with these deliciously chewy gummies. Get one of ten animal designs. Aha, there you go. That's the reason why mine look different. Or it could be a horse. Now that I think about it, I think it might be because they got hoof, uh, horseshoe tracks in the back. Oh. They're lemon. Looks like a bag of larvae eggs. <laughs> I mean, when you look in there... But they're just little uh, semi squishy, lemon smelling. A little tough. They're not real soft, so they're bit they bounce on your teeth. But taste wise, it's like a rem a ramoon lemon. Kind of kind of like a toned down version of this one, which is my one of my favorite drinks. The Choyo Yowana Yowanai Yowanai Yowan AI Yuza. I've showed you this before. It's that one there. It's one of my favorite lemon drinks because it's got a great carbonation to it. <clears throat> ah, yes. We have, I think my local Asian food store has these. We haven't had them in quite a while. These little candy burgers. Mm, hamburger gummy. Yep. Everyone loves hamburgers and gummies. And this sugar-coated combination of both was guaranteed to hit the spot. Yeah, these are all. These are great. I'm not going to open it up because it's just your gummy. Each, each layer of it is just that. That's salty. I'm going to wait on that just a moment. Oh, got another M&M key. That's all they are. It's just little little M&Ms in a key shape. There's the, the back side. Ooh. It's been not too long since we've had one of these. And I forgot. It's not Big Thunder. It's, oh yeah, the Choco Hit Flake. Everything tastes better covered in chocolate. See for yourself and devour the sweet chocolatey goodness in these crispy chocolate coated rice puffs. Yeah, the other. There's two biscuits inside. There they are, as you can see. They're like a miniature rice, uh, rice krispies coated in chocolate, or Choco Rice Krispies, in a way. Mm. Very dense. But, I've never eaten Choco Rice Krispies. Sorry. But I'm assuming it's something like that. But these are not airy like those, that like that cereal. These are very dense. Quite, uh, they're, as I think they said, it was more like the flakes, rice flakes. So you really compact them down into that little round disc. But the flavor-wise, it kind of reminds me of cooking chocolate. 
you know, the big chunks that you can buy. It, it's similar to that. Uh, it's not like Hershey's or any of the others. It's a dark chocolate in, in flavor. This, we've had this, this is clearly cola, where the one before was Ramoon. As you can see, you see it's splashing the cola on the side there. Gabri Gabrichu Coke. Cola lovers will love this long, soft, and chewy stick of cola-flavored, I would say taffy, candy that makes the perfect treat for when you want to take a break for the longer snack to take a longer snack break can I speak no <laughs> there you go it's got a sugary cola scent to it like uh, coca-cola maybe Pepsi mm, it's definitely taffy Has a mild, nice sweetness to it. It's not overly sugar, sugary, like Kit Kats. Um, chewy, of course, but the cola flavor, very nice. It kind of reminds me of cola, Coca Cola, more than Pepsi. Mm, but the the sugar, the, the sweetness of the sugar overrides it a little bit. So you don't really get that full on coat flavor. And after that, you can put some carbonation in it. That would be even better. <clears throat> We've had these, this one from Megum before. Uh, different packaging, of course. This is the Sour Soda Chewing Gum. This pack of sour soda flavored chewing gum comes with three gumballs. Be careful. One of them is so sour it will make you pucker up. Yeah, I'll try it at the end if I can remember. Sometimes I forget. I'm sorry. Uh, it's always fun to see if I can find the sour one. Usually I pick the wrong one. It's always the, just the normal sweet one. Ah, uh, yes. A staple to the boxes. We've had haven't had this particular packaging in quite a while, but I love the artwork on it. Uh, they're just the, the mochi croutons, if I remember right. Don Don Yaki Kimi, ki, ki, Kimchi Gigi Kimchi. I can't speak. <laughs> Imagine a little kimchi in garlic flavored senbei. Ooh, garlic. Coated in finger, finger looking flavor. I would say finger looking good flavor, but <laughs> you'll find it impossible to stop at just one. Well, let's take that challenge. If I can get it open. There we go. Yeah, it's just the normal croutons. Yeah. Yeah, I can taste the garlic on it. Running around your tongue. Hmm. It's a little... I'm going to pump up the lightness levels here. See it? Oh, it jumps. Oops, sorry. Didn't mean to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I like the garlic flavor. Huh? It's really, ne really tasty. But they're... They're just your basic little uh, mochi croutons. Breadcrumbs, in a way. Um, let's go with these. A squirrel. <laughs> There's a squirrel in my box. Choco, chocolate Lubera. Uh, all right. Chocolate mini crepes. These delicious snacks are wrapped up in thin and crispy butter cookies with a whipped white chocolate filling. Take an indulgent bite of this crispy treat and feel that white chocolate melt in your mouth. I really nothing on the back there. And you get two, four, five individual packs. There they are. Hmm. 
very nice. Kind of remind me, I have some of these at work that I was given at Christmas time. I haven't opened yet, but uh, they have the chocolate interior. Mm. Definitely has a strong shortbread scent to it. Very nice. Almost a... Mm, a little bit of vanilla scent as well. Hmm. Very thick interior. Sugar level's a little high. Not bad. But it's like a... Like that of a sugar cookie, in a way. That's what it reminds me of. Like a... A shortbread sugar cookie. Something I'm getting. The way they light outside changes around a little bit because of the cloud cover. Sometimes I'll be, as you noticed, I'll be a little bit shadowed, and other times I'll look like I'm sitting in a sun lamp. <laughs> <clears throat> now. We have this choco cake, which looks like a moon pie. Mm -mm. Uh, let's see. A favorite since its release over 25 years ago. This timeless cake has a fluffy sponge center coated in chocolate. So bite into that chocolate coating to get right into the sponginess. Okay. Definitely looks like a, a, a normal moon pie that we have around here. Oh, there are two of them. I'm sorry. The way it was put together, it, it really looked like a moon pie, but it's actually a, cook, a cookie. We've had these before. Hmm. Wow. At least we've had something similar. It's like a cake inside. It's really, really soft. You, you, can, you can push down on it. That's good. I'm just going to say it right <laughs> Really good chocolate on the outside. Um, it's milk instead of dark. Um, I guess I can... You could say it's like a Kit Kat in that chocolate flavor. A normal Kit Kat, not the white chocolate, obviously. And the cake inside is condensed. So... It, it's not, it's still airy, but it's very compressed. So it's, it's a good combination of both of them together. And it has a mild vanilla flavor to them in, in the interior. I like those. I wouldn't mind having a box of them. <laughs> um, since I got chocolate in my mouth, we'll go with these. Koala Cafe. My favorite. Koala Marches Cafe Coco. Cocoa. Koala Chan is heading to his local cafe for a cup of hot cocoa. Or cocoa. They always add the A on the end. Enjoy this cozy excursion from the comfort of your home with these new hot cocoa flavored koala shaped cookies. Alright. They always put a lot of art artwork on these boxes. Backside. Anything on the top? Yeah, there's a little artwork there. And let's see. Pull like that. What do we have in the lip here? If I can get it to open right. You put a little bit too much glue on the top. There we go. Not sure what it's saying. As you can see right there. Up, let the camera focus on it. And we have your normal bag. The one, those, these I have at work. Well, the similar type are in a bag like that. And we have our normal little koala cookies. This one is dealing, he looks like he's holding a, uh, a T-square in a way. I'm not, 
not T square, uh, one of those triangular rulers, sort of. Oh, that flavor. I think there's your chocolate. What? Oh, that's weird. Either they did give this guy a, give this guy a face, or he's turned around so you see his backside. <laughs> I've never seen him do that before. Yeah, they are chocolate on the side, but look how little you get. There's just a little, a tiny little layer on on the top and bottom. Actually, it's more more on the bottom, and the, there's nothing up top. So that's a little bit of a jip. Oh, got bright outside again. <clears throat> now we have a do-it-yourself kit. With a little, uh, oh, I thought it was hologram. It's actually a hole at the bottom. You can see inside. This belongs to the paper craft animals. Make your own animal piggy bank with this easy and fun DIY kit. Once you're done, don't forget to eat the candy. You get one for five animals. Oh, here's the other side. Interesting. Uh, on the sides, no. All right, there's rips right here. Oops, and it does not like to rip right. So, boy, I'll do it that way. Oh, cool. So, oh, there's some candy in there. It's a little, uh, little bag of, it looks like a hard candy. But, you have a bag with your paper craft animal inside. Open it up, and there's your instructions. I get a raccoon. Cool. One of my favorites. There's one of the cards. There's another one, and there's the face. But it's oh, that's a panda. It's a raccoon. And there's the backside. That's nice. I like that. That's a good a little addition. So I'll put him together later. And I'll sit you right there. Next we have, um, just to get my two of my clips out here. I'm going gonna, gonna to need them. We have Calby. Hiding. There you are. Calby Winter Powder Snow Salt Flavor. <laughs> okay. Calby has made these salt sprinkled chips thicker than your average crinkle cuts. Well, most potato chips are salt flavored anyway. <laughs> A bite of these chips is said to sound like stepping on fresh snow, and they're exclusively made for the from Hokkaido potatoes. And you put a period then an exclamation part at the end of the sentence. You don't need the period. Just smell like your normal potato chip. Most of them are broken up. There's one. Nothing special. They don't sound like walking on fresh snow, though. <laughs> Unless the snow is really freaking hard. <laughs> More like ice. Stepping on ice. I am solid ice. But the salt. It's actually minimal. It's not as strong as potato chips like around here in the States or other varieties. It's sprinkled on there in such a way that it's more of a minimal taste so you get a stronger connection to the potato flavor with an overlay of salt instead of the salt before the potato. They're nice. I like them. 
but I wouldn't say they're special. I mean, there's nothing amazing about them. You know, they kind of reminded me of crinkle cut lace chips, just without the heavy hit of salt on them. <clears throat> yeah, it's been a while since we've had two hotto caramel corn strawberry flavor. And that's exactly what they are. But these are the, what I was saying, strawberry condensed milk flavor. Flavored with, there's that word again, A-M-A-A-O, A-M-A-O-U. Am, am I, o? <laughs> I don't know how to say that word right. Strawberries, otherwise known as the king of them, from Fukuoka, and condensed from milk from Hokkaido. These corn snacks are sweet and tangy. Okay. Ooh, wow. They smell like fresh strawberries. That is strong. And so natural scent. I just want to continue scenting them. Smelling them. I'm sensing them, smelling them, either way. There's your little shrimp. Ooh. Those are delectable. Hmm. The sugar level is very minimal. Which is always nice. And then, after just like three crunches, let's see. How many crunches can you get to this center? One, two, three, four, five, six. About seven, six to seven crunches, and they just melt away. But, the flavor is outstanding. I mean, it has, it's not as strong as the scent, but I guess that there, I, I've tasted condensed milk before, and I guess, I guess there's a little bit of flavor there, but it's mainly the strawberry. That's oh, that's really nice in it, and it, it's kind of like they took the chips and just poured the syrup right on them, like a uh, fresh strawberry syrup, because they are very, very tasty. That's probably my favorite in here so far, next to <clears throat> next to these two cookies. And lastly, at least in the box here, let me shove everything back in here. Get it off my desk. I did find something recently, and I'll show it to you here in a second, at the local grocery store that uh, I didn't know we had over here. I thought it was only in Japan. Because that's the last we had something similar to it in one of our recent boxes. Wait, where's that going? Oh, I thought I put the gum back in here. Because I was going to try that for you. we have there's the squirrels telling you about pistachio Kit Kats. nibble away on this entire pack of limited winter edition pistachio flavored Kit Kats. they blend the taste of that with milk chocolate for an unmistakable flavor keep them all to yourself or share them with somebody you don't know <laughs> here's the back side obviously And there's one of the packs. And they're milk chocolate. Oh, good. They're not white. Hmm. Nice. Cocoa flavor. Shunch. They're mildly green. I don't know if you can tell. Hmm. I haven't had a spita a spitachio, <laughs> a potassio in quite a while, so I'm not really. It's hard to tell the flavor. Hmm. I mean, it could be that nut flavor in there. But you really can't tell. The chocolate is so strong in the flavor. Along, 
I would say the sugar is a little, not massively high like most Kit Kats that we get, but it is a little bit. And so the chocolate and the sugar outweigh the taste of the pistachio. So you don't really, you're getting that more than whatever the flavor is supposed to be of it. So, and so it's not a, it's, again, not a balanced Kit Kat. I don't like it when they do that. It's, I can't, when they do something like that with a Kit Kat, I can't finish a bag because it's just off-putting, really. So it's more of a waste. Before I get to these gum, this gum here, I do want to show you two things I found at Chapel Men. <clears throat> I don't know if we've had them in this in any of these boxes. And we've had pineapple and Ramoon, I think it was. But I did find orange. These little uh, linguini, I'm, I'm sorry, fettuccine ones. And these are just awesome. I love them. They're great. But then they had, <clears throat> I'm not sure what the flavor of these are. Says al dente bouncy bite. <laughs> I love that al dente bouncy bite. Oh, it's soda, so it's Ramon. These, but we haven't had this particular packaging in any of the boxes before, so I haven't tried this one. I haven't opened yet. I've eaten these these other ones. Really, they're they're just great. I love them. I got a couple of them. Those and. I haven't even opened it. I don't know if I want to right now because this has filled me up. Plus, I ate lunch not too long ago. But they have my... Uh, there it is. These little cakes. Yeah, it's 360 for them. Uh, this is the Trung... Trung Tho Dong Trung? No. It's the Mung Bean Moon Cake. It's got Mung Bean, Bleached White, Flour... Sugar, corn oil, water, egg, and yellow dye. <laughs> it's out of from a Houston, Texas. But it caught my eye. They got them in a little stand near the, the cash register. And I asked the guy, how's it taste? He's giving you an idea of it. But, ah, what the hell. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll go ahead and try it. very light sugary scent to it. Get this out of here. As you can see, that's what it looks like. Nice flower design on it. Hmm. But it's quite thick, as you can see. Hmm. Mm, let's see. Huh. Wow. Okay. Very thick on the inside. It's got this layer on the out. Hmm. Very cakey. Um, thick in the mouth. Kind of... It's like a condensed cake in a way. Uh, it's okay. It's got some... A light sweetness to it. The thickness of it is a little off-putting. Yeah, I was expecting, I mean, looking at it, just from the outside, I could tell that it, <clears throat> it must be quite dense, and especially the weight itself. But I was hoping it'd be a little bit more airy on the inside instead of being so thick. But it's not bad. I mean, the mung bean... Uh, all I can think of is maybe a little bit chalky. So, it does leave your throat a little dry. All right. <clears throat> oh, oh, oh. That's right. I'm going to show you these real quick. If you see them, excuse me, in your local store, buy them. I came across these layers. Sour cream and onion. And they're by, uh, I think, Lay's. Frito-Lay. These are excellent.
excellent. But we we just had something similar to this in one of the boxes. You know, they're they're these type right here. These really airy multi multi layer chips. And until now, I thought they were just exclusive to Japan. So it's nice to see that they they've actually brought them over here. And I, to me, these are probably the best potato chips because they're just really tasty. And the airy quality to them are excellent. So if you go into your store, look for them. All right. What is that? That's very strange. Hold on. Let's see if I can get this packaging opened up so I can show you what I'm looking at here. I have this little odd row of all these different little faces, these expressions. And it looks, I mean, they look like little emojis, but, oh, they are. Every one of them are different. They are emojis. Huh. All right, which one will I get today? There they are. There's the three culprits. Hmm. <clears throat> I don't know which one. I usually, every time I pick one, it's... It, very rarely do I get a sour one for you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a whatever by the toe. I'll go with that one. Right in the center. Hmm. Oh. I got the sweet one. Well, I know you want to see my reaction. <clears throat> so, hmm. I'll take him out. I'll try this one. Really? There's two of pick Ralph bat, and both of them are sweet. <laughs> All right. Mm. Last try. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's I mean, it's not, I've had worse. Actually, it's only, it's really quick. It's not that sour. I've had worse over the years. And you've seen my expressions when I give them. <clears throat> That's quite mild. I mean, it's just like a couple of seconds of sourness and then it goes to sweeten it. It's basically like the other ones are. So, eh, they're okay. At least I did find it for you. All right. <clears throat> um, I think that's all for now. Make sure. <clears throat> um, yeah, that's all. <laughs> so, in case you forgot what t-shirt I'm wearing, this is that great Ghostbusters shirt I got years ago. It's really nice. If you want, if you want to get one for yourself, I always put it down in the description, the link for any t-shirt and warrior. So I got this one years ago from Amazon. And luckily it's got a great artwork on it. So it holds up quite well. And Ghostbusters Afterlife is really good. I, I liked it. I thought it was a good fourth entry into the <clears throat> series. Ignore 2016 because that's a piece of junk. Everybody knows it's a piece of junk. That didn't even need to be made. It's I don't mind female Ghostbusters. That would be cool. But the, the, the script, the acting, the humor, everything in it was just absolutely hideous. Uh, so, Afterlife just throws that in the garbage and takes the place of it. <clears throat> Uh, and I say fourth because the 2019 Ghostbusters game 
is technically the third film because that was when everybody was alive. Well, I mean, Harold Ramis, everybody's still alive. Harold Ramis wasn't, but he he was alive during that time, so he was able to work with everybody and do the voice acting in that game. So it's in being, you can see the whole thing remastered on YouTube here. You can, it's basically a movie now. And I thought it was a pretty good at third entry into the series. And then this is the fourth. It makes a, a great ending to it if you want, if you wanted to leave it the way, but they left it open. So there's, there's a possibility of another movie or two in the future because of what Winston was doing in the end. So you'll, you'll like it. And they did an amazing job in Harold Ramis's digital self. You'll see when you see it, you'll be, you'll be highly impressed. It was just beautifully done. Okay. I'm going to leave it here. I'll see you when I get my uh, next Tokyo treat box and I can finally do my January one with a proper booklet. So take care. Stay safe in these crazy times. Bye for now.